Welcome back to a very British space program. Today we're going to launch two brand new planes. The first on the screen right now is the white signal. The other you may have seen a little glimpse of before. We're going to go faster, we're going to go further, and we're going to go higher, hopefully, than we've done before. So please join us. Right, so here we are on the runway, and we uh, we want to take off. We want to get going. Uh, you can see there the uh, the white signal is a sort of single no tail plane. Uh, well, no no proper tail. It's it's got some vertical stabilizers, uh, but it is basically a giant delta wing, very much like the uh, the Vulcan developed by the British, uh, which was a bomber, much bigger bomber. Um, Avro actually had a test craft, and we'll just set off now get going so I'm not talking all the time. Our pilot today is Rodney Hill. It's not often that he gets to fly so yeah we're going to see how this goes. Um, I'm not sure what the takeoff speed is going to be for this craft. Um, I'm hoping it actually takes off quite easily and I want to see from the side when we actually start to lift. There we go. Nice and easy. So um, my hope for this craft is that it's actually going to be able to fly reasonably high. I'm aiming maybe between uh, between eight and ten uh, kilometers would be really nice if it makes it that it might have difficulty because of air and so forth and the engines we are using the Derwent engines on there um, but we'll see how it flies we'll, we'll see how it goes um, so the uh, the white signal uh, one ear uh, nickname Hopkins why the Hopkins well it is named after the uh, the chief test pilot of British aerospace uh, from 1997 onwards who was called Hopkins um, he was the first pilot to uh, f fly the uh, the Eurofighter at twice the speed of sound uh, and also became the project director of the advanced jet trainer um, and the Hawker. Um, so I think it's a nice little a little person to have as a namesake for this craft. It's not a it's not a, a sort of real experimental fast plane. This is our sort of stable science craft and um, we'll see how it goes. But what I think we'll do is, I think we'll do a bit of speedy up and then we'll get back to maybe landing. So, this craft really, um, it, it's it's nice. It, it's stable, it goes on, as my past self has probably been talking about and I probably need to edit it out. Um, we, we flew around for a long time and um, I've, I've just pulled up clips here of, of what's going on, but pretty much... Um, it flew around collecting science. We've got a film camera on there. We can collect science over the different biomes. Interesting, the film camera does have limits on what it can and can't do. Um, so it has to run for a certain. It can only run for a certain amount of time in certain things. And uh, if you start it off activated, you're going to get a lot of. You'll first of all get the biome that you're in, which is is always a good idea to get rid of. But uh, you know, I think I actually jumped out of that biome a couple of times. We've got bits of different science, so I will have to tidy it up in the future. Um, the craft is nice and stable. It doesn't go to the height that I would like. I think I probably wanted it to go to a lot higher, but we only get to about seven kilometers stably. Um, the engines just don't really push it anymore. So I think I'm gonna pull it in for some landing and I'll get back to live me and you can see what happened. I wonder if anything went wrong. Right, so we're, uh, we're coming in for the landing and um, I've cut the engines off and I, I'm assuming with this amount of wing that we can just glide in, but I don't know what the stall speed is. So I'm just going to just try and edge it down. I could maybe have gone lower before I started to try go horizontal, but just, just keep it going. I'm very used to, to flying our sort of pointy jet type craft at the moment. So this is this is not going down as quickly as I'd have expected. You can see, if I haven't mentioned it before, it's got this sort of pointy nose, which uh, I am playing around with. And you may see on a later craft in a bit more of an extreme case. Oh, coming down quick. Oh, pull, 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 pull. Oh, don't, don't, don't bounce. Bounce. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh-oh. Um... Uh, don't 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 be kangarooing for me please come on just counter it I really need to use atmospheric autopilot for this stuff actually I think fly by wire thing oh dear no 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 do I do I fire the parachutes do I fire the parachutes I think I'm too low for the parachutes even this is gonna go badly um we are really slowing down um I should probably I should probably pull up a bit but 
Now we're keeping in the air actually, this is odd. How am I still staying up? Okay, let's just tilt back a bit, just try and take the edge off. And, uh, no, not again. Oh, maybe I should, maybe I'm waiting for it to just crack over one side. I managed to keep it stable. Right, brakes are on. Ooh, that's an interesting landing profile. I think we may need to improve that in the future. Um, not, I think, I don't know what speed, we were doing less than 100 meters per second when landing. Well, anyway, let's stop it there. Right, so that uh, landing was not brilliant. Um, I did go on to fly this craft a number of times, um, primarily just around Australasia to, to try, sort of gather Australia, Australasia to gather um, science. And you can see that the landings did not improve. Um, I actually did some, yeah, we started deploying parachutes and uh, I think that is a failing of this craft actually. I think it possibly needs a, some sort of powered landing. Um, this this one is the interesting one. You'll see there the engines actually ran out of fuel. I was at uh, approaching eight, eight kilometers up and the engines pull out of fuel. And I was using um, autopilot, so I'm not sure how much fuel that the craft actually had, but we'd actually gone straight across Australia. This had gone from one end of Australia to the other, basically. You see that that's the north of Australia there, the northern coast. So it's got a reasonable range on it. Um, and it was just a case of uh, get this craft down. We've definitely gathered the science that we could from this. I'm not sure it is a, uh, a long-term option, but as a technology demonstrator for a, a large Delta wing, and I think it was quite good actually, it should show that there's potential in there. So I think future iterations, which might come with some more advances in jet technology would be, be awesome. But that's enough from the white signal. Let's move on to something different. So we're actually uh, going to take two contracts now. We're in uh, July 1953. We're going to take a contract for a biological sample from low space. Uh, that's going to be 150 kilometers with a science payload. And we're going to take a space planes contract, an X planes contract for 35 kilometers. And that is going to need a new craft, I think. So first of all, we're going to prepare our um, biological sample. We're going to take our Red Maiden 4F. And we're going to just, uh, we're just going to stretch the top bit. Well, I'm not going to stretch it. We're going to stick a few more of those tanks on. Yeah. Um, got to keep the color pattern going. looks a bit like a, a horrible hornet type thing there. So we're going to launch that. Um, but also, we're going to launch our new craft. So join live me. Right, we're just going to fire the engines. This is the first attempt at this. So we're firing those first four engines. I'll talk about them later once we're actually gliding down, I think. And we're going up nicely. So we've got Matthew uh, Matthew West in the in the pilot seat there, and it's going really nicely. So we're going to fire four, and then we've got our fifth engine just for the later burn to refine our altitude. So we're going to go for 35 kilometers. We're going up nicely. You can see the different shape of the craft. That's lovely. It's going to tilt back and more. And I want to I want to try and get a nice arc on this. I want to come down gradually, nicely. So we're going up nicely. This is beautiful, actually. This is, you can see. Hold on. What? Whoa, 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 we're turning. Oh, engine's gone. Engine's gone. Um, all right. Um, cut, cut that engine. Should give us control back. And um, and now I'm not got the thrust I need. I think we're going to have to activate the other engine maybe early. So this this is not the flight plan that I was expecting. Um, let's just get that going. All right. Um, maybe uh, past me. I'll talk about this. Right, so um, yeah, the, the flight uh, went a bit awry at the start there, and uh, I had to basically concentrate because I wasn't entirely sure what was going to happen. Um, so as you saw, we, we set off and we fire our first four engines. These are a Gamma 201 engines. Um, on the back of this, the, um, the White Arrow 2B Farley, and we'll talk about the name in a minute. Um, so basically, it was a um, it's it's an advancement of the of the two A. You can see we've we've kept the same structure. Now this is actually a brand new craft. I've not modified uh, the original. And you can see here it gets up nicely. We've got our our apoapsis well above the thirty five mark. Um, we've got a lot of fuel left in the tank, um, and now it's a decision as to whether I want to push it for speed, or whether I want to actually just cut it out. So I decide we'll go over a thousand and. Um, 
we're going to see a bit of uh, how far it goes, but I'm going to cut it early. I don't want to push it too far first flight because we've lost those engines anyway, and I'm concerned they're going to cut out. Right, so um, it, it's a brand new craft. Um, in, in that I didn't just go and modify the previous craft. So we've actually allowed, uh, we're allowed to build a new one. In my head, we sort of cheated a little bit with the, with the uh, White Arrow 1 to White Arrow 2 when we ripped the wings off. Um, but I think because of the stresses on the bottom, on the frame and so forth, we've changed this. So you can actually see it's got the additional sort of pointy nose section there. Its wings have been reshaped from the top there quite nicely. Um, the tail has been planes been completely reshaped as well to fit in and then we've got cowling over the rear um, engines to give it a bit more of a streamlined shape i'm trying to reduce drag um, the previous design was reasonably stable um, it could have been improved if you actually look carefully when you get an opportunity there's a small fin underneath as well there you go on the bottom of the tail as well as a tiny little fin just to add that extra stability for your control because we have a bit of a yaw issue and so we're coming down very nicely um it is called the Farley, um, named after John Farley, who was a fighter and test pilot. He flew over 80 different craft. He was the first British pilot to fly a MiG-29. Um, he was also renowned as the, the foremost display pilot of the Harrier, and he developed something called the uh, the Farley Takeoff, which I think was to do with using the reaction controls on the on the Harrier to lift it up in a particular way and hold it and hold it steady. Um, Google it; it's you know it's really cool. Um, so we're going to come down. You can see we're, we're getting a bit of that re, that heating. However, interestingly, this this task would not have been possible with the uh, the the two air. We have changed the cockpit from the sort of X1 style to the sort of straighter lines to allow us to put that nose on the front. And the craft in general has a much smaller sort of drag. It's uh, it's changing in area and and surface area and so forth is is designed to be reduced for the for the higher sort of subsonic or supersonic flight characteristics it's a much much more able craft and yes i am not using atmospheric autopilot um this is something that i will do um when in my head we've got to a point where the tech would allow me to do fly-by-wire type stuff i'm still trying to do a bit of a jerkiness at the moment um but you're right i, I will I think possibly for our next iteration of craft, I think we'll start using it because uh, they will come along when we get the next sort of tier of technology. Remember, we're in 1953 at the moment. Um, we're, we're, we're now able to go up to 75 kilometers with this upgraded cockpit because we've got the technology to upgrade that. Um, but anyway, let's, let's come in for a landing. So this is going to be very similar to the, uh, to the, um, to the White Arrow 2A in its landing. It's got the same placement of, of undercarriage and so forth, a slight nose modification. Um, we've got the same sort of uh, traditional approach. The, the concern I had was that, that lower fin, but that's been nicely trimmed. And then we just come in and we do, this lands at a quite a high speed actually. It is a, a very fast landing craft and I could probably bleed off more speed, but those wings are very narrow. And I'm a little concerned about stalling. So we, we land at over 200 meters per second. So it's like point, I think that's point, uh, point 0.7 of a Mach, Mach 0.7 or something like that. Um, so it's, it's going fast. You wouldn't land a, an old plane at that speed, but uh, we'll have to look at that. Luckily, being in Australia, we get a nice big runoff. So that's our two new planes. We're gonna use uh, at least this, the, the uh, White Arrow is gonna get used quite a bit. The other one, not so sure. So we'll take all that money from the contract and let's finish our other one. So here we have the Red Maiden 4F. Um, launch is nicely. I'm gonna run this one reasonably quickly for you because it's a it's a standard launch, you see. It takes a while to build these craft, but in reality, um, we can we can get on with them and, 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 and just get them knocked out of the park. What I am quite enjoying actually is the, the plane contracts are starting to build up to a point where um, there is a timer on them and it's quite nice that it spreads them out because it'd be very easy with the reusability of the planes to actually just rattle through them constantly um, and so I'm, I'm now we've got to a point where I'm like holding off on doing some of them until we get a bit more money um, in particular the sort of uh, the supersonic consistent supersonic craft at, at set altitude like the you know Mac 2 at such and such a, a speed um, Anyway, the, the, the rocket launches with the, the Red Maiden have just become normal, haven't they? Red Maiden 4 is a very consistent rocket now. It, it does its job. I think it is probably reaching its limit. Um, I think 
you know the uh, the the red prince that we've developed and the red princess um, are, are probably the future. This single engine launch is it has its place, but I don't see it doing much more. Um, we've we've increased the quality, the size of the launch pad, and uh, I think this is probably going to be the end of it for the red maiden. This maybe it's probably its last flight. We'll have to see if there's any other contracts usable. But anyway, it comes down. We go through the normal sort of uh, atmospheric heating as it comes down. Um, and that, that's going to be it. I don't want to spoil it. I'm not going to show you the landing all the way through because once the parachute's open, well, you know what? It's safe. Um, but anyway, as the rest of the rocket explodes and our parachute's open, I will wish you a great one and see you um, next time. So, uh, have a great one. <laughs>